All right, YouTube, today we're playing the Modern Challenge. I'm just double queuing in the end of my queue match, so I might not be super paying attention for the first, like, two or three turns of this match, but it shouldn't take that long. Because my opponent over in my cube is dead six ways to Sunday. They're tutoring, losing three life. Uh, yeah, we'll put that on top. If we're playing against a combo. Our hand's pretty good. Are we playing against Burn to start, or is it the Goblin deck? Nothing. I'm actually just going to hedge my bets here and go get a Swamp. We don't have anything going on yet, and like we're going to be able to play Death Shadow at some point. I just don't want to get caught with my pants down here. Get my swamp. All right, they scooped it up. Nice. Okay. All right, now I can pay attention to the old Twitch chat. And we'll thought seize our opponents. I assume we're playing against Burn, Valakit, or... Um, the Goblins deck that won the PTQ. I've been seeing that running around Moto the last couple days. Oh, what is this? Oh, so we're playing against, we're playing like a, oh, we're playing a Mono Red Prison deck. So I could just take this Desperate Ritual. I'm just going to take the Chandra. It's like the only card that really matters. This is a tough matchup game one, I believe. They do with their mulligan. They put a card on the bottom. Yeah, so here comes the Desperate Ritual. They talk like a Goblin Rattle Answer. That's, that's not that bad. That's actually pretty bad. I don't have a, I don't have a Fetch Land or any roll. It might be Flash and Old Snapcaster Mage in to deal with that thing. But then they can just... Oh, that's bad. Then you find a fetch land. All right, that's not terrible. So let's get this abrade out of here. I'm going to take six. I'm just going to play this tapped. I'm in a tough spot. I don't have a fetch land for revolt for my fatal push. But next turn, I can flash in Snapcaster Mage to block this thing. I could have shocked myself to Thought Scour, but I'm already taking six. I don't want to take eight. And I'm going to have two 1-1s one -one left on the board. We find a Death Shadow. It kind of undoes all this for us, but I'd find a Death Shadow. Lightning Bolt would be great. So I'm going to shock myself so that I can flash in Snapcaster Mage, block here, push one of these, take two, and then I've got I'll, then I've got push for the last one. This is a Blood Moon that I'm going to throw up. Hazard. Yeah, that's just game. All right, scoop it up. So I think we want all. Of, we don't want any of our grindy elements. We want to just be as low to the ground, keep our removal in. Like we want stubborn denial. Like I don't want any of my snapcaster mages. I want stubborn denial. Coligon's command, probably this Vendillion click, and then a braid. Um. I honestly don't need Team or Battle Rage either. Because, like, they, they've got, uh, they've been snaring bridges that it's important to be able to kill. So, I've click, K command. Dismember kills Hazard, which is probably worth it. These mono red prison decks, they have, how much graveyard hate do they usually have?
I don't know how much like modern. I could just head my bets and cut a Gurmag Angler. Because like I would assume that they've got relics after sideboard. Like that would just that would make sense. No, they just have they don't have relics. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this in. Probably just cut. Probably just cut a street wraith. I don't know if that's right or not. I'm not. I don't have a super extensive sideboard guide for dealing with this deck, as it's not very popular. But it got us there. Explosives is like there's an argument to explosives also, but I don't know what else I would cut. I want my removal to be able to kill like Hazrets and Magus of the Moons. I want my counter spells to be able to hit chalices. Chandra's in snaring bridges, and then I want my artifact removal to be able to kill all those things. So it's kind of tough. Okay, so let's. I think I got a mulligan. I don't have a cantrip. If I had a cantrip where this land produced black, I would keep it, but we're going to ship this one. This hand is not much better, but it is better. Put this on the bottom. We just need lands at this point. Hopefully my opponent doesn't just like get me here. So I think I'm gonna fetch Watery Grave and fetch and Thought Scour myself. Because I would like to be able to cast my Gurmag Angler slash discard spells and my okay, there we go. Alright, nice, nice. We're in good shape. So one, two, three, four. So is it all? Is it time to go all in on the Gurmag Angler? I kind of like going all in on the Angler. I think we're gonna fetch an island because I can cast this without black mana, and we can still like stuff. If they Blood Moon me, we can still play through it. They go. Chalice into Blood Moon, it's going to be rough. Not, or Chalice into Ensnaring Bridge, it's going to be rough. But I think it's time to just, when in doubt, put the clock on. And then just get our Angler down. A Street Wraith would have been sweet there. Or something that costs zero in order to keep the Stubborn Denial up. But, such is life. Hopefully they don't have a Dismember. They have a Dismember for this, it kind of like invalidates my entire plan, but play mountain. Definitely gotta fetch a uh, swamp with this next turn. Just to kind of play hold everything. Rabble Master. Rattlemaster is actually fine, because we'll block here, fetch our swamp, push this, then attack, hold Stubborn Denial, and Dismember. So I don't really see how we get gut from this point of the game, because we'll put them on a four-turn clock with, you know, a, oh, that's kind of, that's not actually that bad. It's going to let me deal damage to myself also, so that if I do draw a Death Shadow, it's live. I'll get a... I have double black. I'll just get Blood Crypt. I always, I always like hate whenever I cast the, whenever I draw the, uh, whatever it is, the Steam Vents or play the Steam Vents, unless I absolutely have to, I oftentimes get punished for it.
So we don't care about a Blood Moon. We're going to let Blood Moon go if they cast that. We care about Chalice and Ensnaring Bridge the most. We can fight down a Hazard. We can fight down a Hazard or a Chandra. So this is something. This is counterable. Man, my moto is already lagging. I probably have to restart in between rounds, which is fine. We'll have we'll have the time. That's a really good draw. So let's cast this. Now I'm gonna leave the swap in my hand so that if I have a blood moon, they just play it. A braid, Chandra, PNR. Yeah, we're just gonna take the Pia. The Pia is just the most blockers. My opponent plays Chandra. We'll just take care of it. Um, they can, like, if they draw, like, another Abrade, they can go probably a braid into a braid to kill this. And then I'm, then I'm in a lot of trouble. But we're putting them on a two-turn clock. But if they do something with a Chandra, I've definitely got to, uh, got to deal with it. Mr. Chandra is going to be effectively a fog. Can't cast that. I would like a stubborn denial or another threat, I think. Stubborn denial would be the best draw for us. We can deal with Hazret. Okay, stubborn denial is really good. So trying to get this off the board. They have a braid and an unknown. So Chandra wasn't bad. It turned into a four mana deal two game five. Okay. Was a storm breath dragon or something like that? Chalice on one. Yeah, I mean, we might as well stub it. We're not going to be able to use it if it resolves. And then if my opponent fires at the Mutavault, we'll just dismember the Mutavault. And then get in there. Yeah, so the Mutavault's on blocking duty. Alright, that's a great draw. That's a great draw because it lets us dismember Hazret, which we're definitely in the market for. Yeah, we're not even going to let him block. Another reason to keep all our removal in also. So hopefully they don't find a second of braid. Eidolon, that's okay. We just pay full retail on the dismember here. Because our last card's a braid. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. For being on the play. On the draw, it's going to be tough. On the draw, we definitely can get got by like a turn one chalice. So I might want some more answers to Chalice when I'm on the draw. Like maybe a little less removal and then bring in these rejections on the draw. Yeah, the rejections are live. I like that. Fatal Push is our worst removal spell out of all of them because it's pretty conditional with all of their creatures. So, just gotta like mulligan aggressively and play conservatively. We don't, really don't want to keep a hand that can't interact with a chalice with a, be a counter spell or an abrade or a. Um, with either an abrade or a. Colagon's command, I think. I'm going to be pretty aggressive mulligan here. But providing my opponent doesn't have the nut, then I can go discard spell, 
rejection. Because, like, with stubborn denial and rejection, I basically got 12 ways to interact with the with it on the stack. Sounds so good. I think I have to keep it. Like, we're going to be filling up our graveyard. This is kind of a mulligan, so maybe I should mulligan. Hang on. My opponent mulls, which means my stubborn denials are more likely to be on. And I can just trade and buy time. I think I'm going to keep. We're in trouble to the to the turn one chalice. My opponent's got out of their mulligan. They mull into land guide chalice. Then I'm in trouble. Puts a card on top. Okay. So they put a card on top. It's likely some kind of payoff. So I think we're just going to hold up Stubborn Denial. And we're going to hope that we hit a land drop next turn to be able to do two things. Give me something to stop. Come on. They're thinking about it. They are thinking about it. They might play around stub. If they play around stub, it wouldn't be bad. It's not even necessarily like it wouldn't it's not even like a ghosting thing either. It makes sense. Like I shocked. So like I, I wouldn't be that mad. If my opponent were to, um, if my opponent were to play around it, all right, no guide, no guide, baby. All right, nice. Land, okay. So now we're going to discard spell because that's probably the card they kept on top. So let's look at what they got here. I guess it's probably just a pretty easy ensnaring bridge. Like if that if whatever if that thing comes down next turn that uh, Eidolon then I'm going to be able to at least start to cast some spells into it, hopefully. And it's going to turn my Death Shadow on. Yeah. So there's the idol on. Yes. So. Fetch Shock 15. So I can get the Death Shadows down next turn, I think. So I think we're just going to hold up here. hold be Hide behind this Stubborn Denial. Because I can only go fetch out to 15, idle on trigger to 13, so I can't actually get it into play. So we're just going to play conservatively. Then if my opponent attacks, they're two four fours, which is pretty decent. Okay. And they're just going to play this direfully Daredevil. Plays another Eidolon. Okay. Um, God, that's tough. Now my lands are coming into play tapped. So I'm just going to get a Blood Crypt here. All 
All right, that's not bad. That's going to be my fetch land for my stubborn denial if I need it. So let's. So if I go to seven, if I go to seven, block my opponent's Eidolons, or if I just hold up here and play with the stub, because they're if they cast spell, they go to fourteen, which means I still can't kill them next turn. This is intense. So hands direfully Koth X. I think I cast the other Death Shadow. I think that's just putting on maximum pressure. Because if they cast a spell, because then if they cast two spells, then they're basically like dead. I essentially idle on my lock myself if I have to stubborn denial on anything though. Like I put myself to two, which I think is okay. Alternatively, we're attacking with two six sixes next turn. Okay. So my opponent actually has to take eight off their dire fleet daredevil. Desperate ritual. Okay. So hey, so they're gonna they're gonna ritual out this cost. then we are going to stub the Koth. But now I can't attack. Oh no. Oh, I think I punted. So stub this. I go to two. I have two ten tens. I have to stub this, but we might turn in. We might get into a. At least I can cast Gurmag Angler next turn, so I actually can attack. So now I'm idle unlocked, but. Angler plays around that. And then I think I'm just crashing in with both of my Death Shadows. So I crash in with both Shadows. They chump, probably take, and then go to three. And then I play Gurmag Angler. And they'll have to have a blocker for the Gurmag Angler, which I don't see coming. I don't see them doing here. And they can't do anything with this Dire Fleet Daredevil. And then they we're just they're gonna be Then they're dead next turn as well. So yeah, we're shipping in with both of the shadows. Because they have to chump one of them. And then we just played Vendillion Click. We can delve. We'll leave. Inquisition of Kozilek, I think, just to make it so, give my opponent the option to fuel my delve cards for future, if that matters. My opponent blocks with both, then I'm going to make it so this Dire Fleet Daredevil doesn't do anything next turn. 
Just going to delve all of my relevant spells. Because we're pretty insulated from everything. I can't think of a draw that really like killed me here. Skirmag Angler was gas. Moto is so laggy right now that I'm just nervous. Okay. If I click him, I die to the Eidolon. I'm at two. Right, Paulo Theodoro? So now he basically needs to kill me this turn or create three blockers, or add two blockers to the board while keeping the idle iron play. So I have to block. Ensnaring Bridge isn't out, but I've got Colagon's command for it. I don't think my opponent's deck doesn't play Bolt. It doesn't play Helix. There we go. 1-0 in the challenge. All right. 